Hey everyone, welcome to Witcode, where in this video we're going to learn about Webpack production versus development. So before we begin, let's just talk about production versus development. So when developing an application, it is essential to have an environment for production and one or even more for development. There are many reasons for this, but typically we want our application out in production to be as fast and small as possible, while we want our application in development to provide useful debugging information such as logging, source maps, and things like that. In other words, we want development to be a good experience for the developer and production to be a good experience for the end user. So Webpack can be configured to process code in three different ways, production, development, or none. Setting the mode to production or development enables certain plugins and also sets the node environment variable to production for production and development for development. Examples of some enabled plugins are the Terser plugin, which is enabled in production, which minimizes code, and also the module concatenation plugin, which is also enabled in production, which concatenates modules and just things like that. So by default, Webpack processes code for production. For a demonstration, we just have a simple Webpack configuration file here where we have an entry point, an output, and let's also use the HTML Webpack plugin to place the outputted JavaScript bundle. Before we run Webpack, let's change the contents of this index.js file. Specifically, what we're going to do is let's place a conditional statement that logs to the console based on the current node environment. Let's also write some code that will introduce an error by calling a function that does not exist. So basically, we have a conditional here where if the node environment is development, then we will run, we will log this to the console, whereas if it's in production, we will log this to the console. And now let's just run Webpack. And of course it doesn't work this way, but what I've done is just created a build script here, which will run this for us. So if we run npm run build. So if we look into the outputted index.html file here, the first thing we can see that it is minified. So thanks to the Terser plugin that is enabled when we set the mode to production. And this is because, remember, by default, Webpack runs everything in production mode if we don't specify it. So we can see mode option has not been set. Webpack will fall back to production, which means the Terser plug is enabled, which means this is minified, which is why it's only on one line. And now let's just serve up this index.html file and check the console to see what's printed. And so what we can see printed is I'm in production mode. And also we see does not exist, it's not defined, but we don't get very useful information because we see what's just listed is the bundle line one as part 41. So we can see that it's been minified, process.env, process.env.nodeenv has been set to production based off this logging here. But so we can explicitly tell Webpack to process code as ready for development or production by using the mode key in a Webpack configuration file. So now let's set the mode to development and look at the difference. Now let's run Webpack. And the first thing we notice if we look at the HTML file is that it's not minified. So when it was in production, everything was on one line, thanks to the Terser plugin, but now it's all spread out throughout. And we can also see that inside our file here nothing is minified. However, if we go back into the console, we can see some more helpful error messaging. Due to some source mapping, we can see at index.js line four, which if we click into that, this is a lot easier to read than we can see. Of course, there's been some processing, but we can see it here. And so now let's start to talk about multiple Webpack configuration files. So toggling between mode to development and production, of course, if we didn't want to use production by just allowing it to be the default, we just provide production here. But toggling between development and production mode isn't very efficient. And the best way to handle this is to create two different Webpack configuration files, specifically one for production and one for development. 
So let's create two webpack configuration files called webpack.dev.js for development and webpack.prod.js for production. Now, before we add anything to these files, let's create some NPM scripts to run our application in development mode and production mode. So now running npm run build will create a production ready build of our application and running npm start will run our application in development mode. So now let's start filling out these files and let's start with a development configuration file. To begin, let's set the mode to development and let's provide an entry point, an output and provide the HTML webpack plugin. We should also make it so that we don't have to run npm start each time we make changes because this is a, this manual process is very inefficient and time consuming and we want a best developer experience. Instead, we can use webpack dev server, which will automatically recompile our code for us and also refresh the browser when it detects save changes. We can install webpack dev server from npm as a development dependency. So npmi webpack dev server dash d is a development dependency. And now let's configure this development server inside our development configuration file by using the key dev server. And let's specifically tell the webpack server to serve up files in the build folder on port 9999. So here we're saying serve up on port 9999 on local on local host and static is um, the location of what we want to serve up, which is of course our outputted bundle. And we also add the open key and set it to true so that the webpack dev server opens the default, opens up our default browser after it's been started. So it just makes things a little bit easier. And now let's alter our start script to use the webpack dev server. And all we have to do is add serve to the script. So now let's get it up and running. Before we do that, let's delete our output file or output folder. So I'm going to show you something here. So we can see it automatically opened everything up. And something also, so we've got everything opened up, which is nice. And now if we go back in here, we can see that actually we don't have our build folder outputted when we ran npm start and the console is hanging here watching for changes. But the reason we don't get the outputted bundle is because Webpack Dev Server keeps the bundle files in memory as opposed to writing them to the disk. I believe you can also, you can of course configure Webpack Dev Server to output them, but by default they are outputted. But because of the fresh reloading too, we're in development mode. We'll just change this to oh yeah. You can see it detects the change. Sorry for blinding you. And we go back in and we can see the change right here. I'm in development mode, oh yeah. So this is all we're gonna do for our development file. There's of course more things you can add as you have more things like CSS, but this is just the basis for it. But now let's work with our production configuration file. And to begin, let's set the mode to production, provide an entry point, an output, and the HTML webpack plugin. But something we want to do differently in our production file is we want to use substitution in the output file name so our changes are not cached. And we could do that with the content hash substitution, which would basically create a hash out of the content in our files. But actually for this video, this is all we're going to be adding to our production file. We don't need a development server as this is purely for development and it is not ready for out in production. So you'd want to use something to serve it up like Nginx I'm out in production. And also if you're using other file types such as CSS, then um, you would want to install the appropriate minimizer so that those could be minimized as well. So there's more things you would add depending on the different file types you have. But nevertheless, the theory is the same of having everything minified for production for a better user experience and a better development experience for development. But now if we run production, so npm run build, 
what we get who we get is our output bundle with a content hash and then we can also so now this is ready to be placed on a server and served up and then one final thing I want to note is that often people use the webpack merge library and so to dry up the code or not have repeated code but me personally I like to just have a prod and development file and just leave it like that um, I don't mind too much about having the same thing written again inside these two. Like we see we both have the HTML Webpack plugin, but I don't know, it doesn't bother me too much. But anyway, this is uh, my video on Webpack development and production. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. But besides that, I want to thank you for liking and subscribing today, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.